The purpose of today's webinar is to provide an overview of the Maine through year assessment, including an introduction to Maine's through year model, assessment pre administration and administration, computer adaptive testing in Maine's through year assessment, scoring and reporting, accessibility features, and continued use of map growth. This school year marked a gradual transition from the map growth assessments we had been using to the ultimate goal of a three-year model. The first full implementation of all parts of the three-year model will be 2023 to 24. In the three-year model in the fall, a student will take an adaptive test similar to map growth that will produce RIT scores. The winter session will remain optional. If taken, the winter assessment will be a personally adaptive assessment, taking into consideration the student's fall assessment results and picking up from there. The optional winter assessment will also produce RIT scores. Finally, the required spring assessment will be a personally adaptive assessment, taking into consideration the student's most recent assessment results and picking up from there. The spring assessment will continue to provide a RIT score in addition to a measure of students on grade proficiency. Let's look more closely at Maine's three-year model. In the fall and winter, students will take a diagnostic assessment that uses the same question bank as map growth with the same wide adaptivity and produces RIT scores. I often refer to these diagnostic portions as map growth-like. In the spring, the assessment has two parts, the diagnostic portion containing map growth questions in addition to a summative portion that meets federal peer review requirements and produces a performance score based on state standards. This performance score is aligned to one of four achievement levels, well below, below, at, and above state expectations. One of the most frequent questions I get is why are we making this change? As I had mentioned previously, the spring summative portion of the main three-year assessment will meet federal peer review requirements for state assessments. Peer review is a process that every state assessment goes through after development, and according to peer review, a state's assessment must be criterion referenced and aligned to the state standards. Map growth does not meet the requirements for a criterion referenced assessment as it reports RIT scores according to national norms. As such, it was a temporary emergency solution during the pandemic to address educators' needs for immediate actionable data. But moving forward, map growth on its own will not be enough. In the development and design of the main through year assessment, the Department of Education has worked to maintain those aspects of map growth that continue to meet educators' needs, in particular RIT scores, while also working to develop a portion of the spring assessment that meets federal peer review requirements. When we're comparing the map growth assessment to the through year model, it's important to note that both the map growth and through year assessments are developed by NWEA. Both are adaptive assessments containing questions above, on, and below grade level. Both produce a norm referenced RIT score for measuring growth over time. And both take approximately one hour for the average student to complete each subject area in reading and math. The through year assessment also has a spring summative portion that provides the ability to produce a criterion reference performance score, personally adapts the diagnostic portion of the assessment in the winter and spring based on the student's previous assessment results, and meets all federal requirements for state assessments. Next, we will look at some key information regarding the preparation for and administration of the main through year assessment. The main three-year assessment will be administered through a new lockdown browser. On this slide, you can see the devices, operating systems, and processors that are required. Items highlighted in yellow are new for the 2022-23 school year. Please note that although Mac OS 1014, or Mojave, is no longer supported, NUIA did not remove any functionality or disable this version from working. NUIA still recommends that schools use supported operating systems but also understands that this may not always be an option readily available. If SAUs are using Mojave and run into issues, the secure browser will still function, but it is important to know that NUIA partner support cannot provide additional support and that in turn, it may not be the best experience for the students. 
The system requirements for the lockdown browser continue on this slide. In addition to the previous system requirements for the lockdown browser, here are the system requirements to access the online management and reporting insights platform. To access the state management and reporting platform, users will first log into the MARC platform. The words main through year will appear as an option on the left-hand side of the screen and clicking that will take users to the state platform. For the main through year assessment, students will be rostered using a roster file from main DOE. Students designated supports and accommodations will be entered by the school or SAU during the registration process once a roster has been generated. Item type samplers are available on our website and in the secure lockdown browser. Short videos to demonstrate the student experience in the platform are also now available. With spring being the first administration for the through year assessment, using the item sampler prior to the administration window will help students and users become familiar with the platform, navigation, and tools. District assessment coordinators have several key pre-administration responsibilities, including the following. Work with technology coordinators to verify system and bandwidth readiness, including downloading of the latest version of the NUIA State Solutions Secure Browser. Attend one of the virtual main through year assessment administration trainings on either March 16th or 21st. If district assessment coordinators are unable to attend either training, the trainings will be recorded and posted online. Read the assessment coordinator guide. Schedule the assessment. Complete registration activities, which includes entering student supports and accommodations. Entering student supports and accommodations can also be assigned to the school assessment coordinator. Distribute assessment materials. Test tickets can be printed by proctors, but district assessment coordinators will need to use the print on demand feature for any approved paper-based or large print assessments. Braille forms are mailed directly to schools. District assessment coordinators should check with school administrators to ensure that Braille forms have been received. Lastly, DAC should lead a school assessment coordinator orientation in which the district assessment coordinator outlines the district schedule, any expected procedures for distribution, storage, and collection of assessment materials, assessment security basics, and steps to prepare proctors. The administration of the main through year assessment allows for a flexible schedule that best meets the unique needs of your school and students. Although we recommend trying to complete each subject in two days, two days for math and two days for reading. We understand that depending on your needs, additional time may be designated for the assessments. In addition, we recognize that younger students will likely need more breaks and shorter sessions. If schools do choose to administer both reading and math in one day, we strongly recommend a break between sessions to alleviate student fatigue. The administration of the main through year assessment must be in person. There are multiple reasons for this. The first is that the assessment is test ticket driven, removing some of the responsibilities from the proctor, such as approving the start of each student's session. The second reason for an in-person administration in the spring is that the summative portion of the assessment has more limited question item bank than map growth. The map growth item bank contains approximately 40,000 questions, which makes it highly unlikely that two students will see the same question at the same time. The summative item bank contains fewer items. To maintain assessment security for the summative portion, schools are required to administer it in person. Although the spring assessment contains two portions, summative and diagnostic, those questions are shuffled throughout the assessment. And so for the students, the experience is that of one cohesive assessment. In the transition from map growth to the main through year assessment, main DOE has increased the availability of accessibility features. We will return to this topic later in this presentation. Proctors and administrators have several key responsibilities before, during, and after administration of the assessment. Before administration, proctors should review the proctor user guide, which focuses on the technical aspects of the platform, as well as the assessment administration manual, which includes scripts for each assessment. Proctors should also make sure to remove reference materials, such as educational charts, posters, and name tags from the testing environment prior to the assessment session. During the assessment, proctors are responsible for providing students with universal tools, such as scrap or scratch paper and writing utensils. 
Proctors must maintain standardized assessment conditions by avoiding coaching or prompting, as well as by following all directions and scripts exactly as they are stated in the administration manuals. Issues that occur during assessment, including issues that could compromise assessment security, should be reported to the school assessment coordinator. After the assessment, the proctor should collect all assessment materials, including test tickets and paper-based booklets, where applicable, and return them to the school assessment coordinator. To access the reporting and assessment management platform, proctors will first log into the MARC Map Growth platform with their existing login information, and then click Main Through Year in the left-hand menu. The Main Through Year assessment is a test ticket-driven assessment similar to the Main Science assessment. As a result, proctors do not need to manually start, pause, or resume assessments. Once a student enters the information from their test ticket, the assessment will begin and the proctor will guide the students through the directions screens. Students can pause their assessment from their device and re-entering their test ticket login information will automatically resume their assessment. With the management platform, proctors will be able to monitor which students are ready to test, are in progress and have submitted, as well as any possible alerts. Alerts include students who have an enrollment hold and students who are inactive. In addition, proctors can see each individual student's assessment status. For example, the icons on the slide indicate from left to right that the student is ready to test, the student is testing, the student is inactive, and the student has submitted their assessment. Assessment resets erase all student progress and generate a new test ticket, and all resets require main DOE approval. NUIA has created a form for SAUs to submit their reset requests, and after the reset request is received, Maine DOE reviews the request before providing approval. So let's look at some of the circumstances which may indicate that a reset is necessary. First, if a student is administered an assessment for the wrong grade level, we would expect that the assessment be reset and the student be given the assessment for the appropriate grade level. In addition, if a session is administered without the proper accommodations for the IEP or 504 plan, or with an accommodation not in the IEP or 504 plan, we would expect that the assessment be reset. If none of those apply, next we went in to consider how many questions the student had answered. And if the student had answered five or fewer questions, then the following would apply. For five or fewer questions answered, was the student's performance affected by illness? If that's the case, the assessment can be reset. If five or fewer questions were answered and TTS or text-to-speech should have been assigned as a designated support but wasn't, then the assessment can be reset. Text-to-speech can always be assigned after a student starts an assessment. But if text-to-speech is assigned after students start the assessment, it will not be fully functional for some gap match and graphic gap match or drag and drop questions. So what does it mean for an assessment to be adaptive? When considering NUIA's assessments, we are defining an adaptive assessment as one in which the question items adjust in difficulty based on ongoing test performance. NUIA achieves this through the use of a constraint-based engine. In essence, the difficulty of the next question is determined by the correctness of the student's previous answer. As shown in this graph, correct answers are designated by white circles and incorrect answers are designated by gray circles. After every correct answer, the difficulty of the next question is slightly higher. After every incorrect answer, the difficulty of the next question is slightly lower. This allows the constraint-based engine to gradually narrow the range of difficulty of the questions, leading ultimately to determining a student's achievement score. Both the MAP growth assessment and the through-year assessment are adaptive tests. At this time, the adaptivity of the spring through-year assessment is slightly different for grades three through eight than grade 10. For grades three through eight, as shown here, the diagnostic portions of the assessment have the same wide adaptivity as map growth. For the summative portion of the assessment in the spring, federal assessment requirements allow the assessment to be adaptive within one grade level above or below the student's actual grade.
For grade 10, similar to grades three through eight, the diagnostic portion has the same wide adaptivity as map growth. At this time, however, we do not yet have enough grade 10 summative items to create an adaptive summative form for spring 2023. That means that the summative portion will not be adaptive, but the summative questions will be shuffled to reduce the likelihood that students are seeing the same questions at the same time. We're gonna take a moment to look at the two types of scores generated by the main through year assessment. RIT scores and student performance scores. Please note that RIT scores will be generated with every administration of the main through year assessment, whereas student scaled performance score and accompanying achievement level are determined only by the spring assessment. Because the diagnostic portion of the assessment contains items from the map growth assessment, RIT scores from the main through year assessment will be comparable to those from the map growth assessment. In addition, NUIA psychometrics team will be completing a series of studies to ensure that RIT scores are comparable and if needed to correct their calculations. NUIA expects to provide RIT scores for the spring 2023 assessment to SAUs within their reporting platform in July, 2023. RIT scores will include overall RIT scores for reading and math, as well as RIT scores for instructional areas. These instructional areas are aligned to the Common Core State Standard instructional areas used in the version of map growth that most states in the nation use. This decision was made to support the desire expressed by SAUs to have useful longitudinal data that can span the off grades, K through two, nine and 11, as well as the required assessment grades, three through eight and second year of high school. You can see the instructional areas for reading here. The instructional areas for math also align to those used in the most recent Common Core State Standard version of map growth, making longitudinal comparisons possible. Here you can see the instructional areas for grades three through five, as well as the instructional areas for grades six and above. In addition to the three-digit RIT score, the spring administration will produce a four-digit skilled performance score in reading and math. These scores will be aligned to one of the four general achievement levels shown on this slide. The achievement levels outline both the level of understanding a student demonstrates as well as the preparedness of that student for the next grade level. The Achievement Level Explorer tool allows educators to Access the progression of grade level performance expectations defined by Maine's achievement level descriptors shown on the previous slide. Analyze student performance by achievement level. Plan instruction so all students have the opportunity to learn and meet the expectations for their highest levels of achievement. And analyze student progress and identify target standards for growth. Reports for the main three-year assessment will appear in two platforms, the three-year assessment platform and the map growth platform. In the three-year assessment platform, users will be able to access basic RIT score information, such as overall score in reading and math, overall percentile score, instructional area scores, and standard error of measurement, as well as summative assessment mean performance score and achievement level. Depending on user access, Information can be aggregated at district and school levels or displayed at the student level. In addition, data can be displayed according to student demographics, such as ethnicity, gender, and special education status. Math growth reports will become available in fall 2023 as NUIA will integrate RIT scores from the through year assessment administrations into pre existing math growth reports. The data on map growth reports will not include proficiency scores tied to accountability measures. Data for accountability will continue to be reported to Acacia main three-year reports. We expect all map growth reports except the learning continuum to be available. NUIA has released a toolkit for SAUs. In order to receive map growth reports, SAUs will need to take the additional step of rostering students in the MARC platform as you are accustomed to do in the past.
Here are some of the student level reports that will be available. As well as some of the class level reports and school or district level reports. One of the changes implemented this year with the introduction of the three-year assessment is to have a common set of accessibility features that apply to both general assessments, main three-year and main science. As a result, unless I designate an accessibility feature as math only or reading only, it applies to the general reading, math, and science assessments. There are three tiers of accessibility features for the general assessments, universal tools, designated supports, and accommodations. Universal tools are available to all students who take the assessment, designated supports are determined on an individual basis, and accommodations are available only to those students with an IEP or 504 plan. Embedded universal tools are within the assessment platform and provided automatically to all students. Examples include Zoom, Line Reader, and Answer Eliminator. The best way to prepare all students is to explore the tutorials and item samplers that will be provided by NUIA this spring. Scrap or scratch paper should be provided to students as a universal tool. This can be lined paper, blank paper, or graph paper as well as individual erasable whiteboards or assistive technology devices to make notes or record responses. Designated supports increase accessibility without altering the construct of any assessment item. Designated supports are determined on an individual basis, for example, but certainly not limited to, as part of a multi-tiered system of supports, response to intervention, individual language acquisition, or student assistance team. The most important thing to remember is that the supports must be consistent with the student's normal routine during classroom instruction. Only the reading passages on the reading assessment are intended to assess the student's reading ability. And yet the remaining components of the general assessments do use grade level text and academic vocabulary. As a result, if a team of two or more education professionals has determined that a student should use text to speech to access text in the classroom, especially grade level text, it is appropriate to assign text to speech to that student for the assessments. When you assign text to speech for the reading assessment, it will read the directions, questions, and answer choices, but not the reading passages. Other designated supports that are provided by the assessment administrator or proctor include individual or separate setting and small group setting. Alternate aids and supports include alternate and assistive technology for communication, as well as visual aids and auditory devices. Bilingual word glossaries are word-to-word -word glossaries without definitions provided to students who are multilingual learners per their individual language acquisition plan. Mathematical supports can include, but are not limited to, a number line, multiplication chart, base 10 blocks, fraction tiles without numerical labels, and clocks without numbers or gears. Accommodations are available to students with 504 plans or IEPs only. Paper-based and large print test forms are for students that have an accommodation that specifies that assignments are not to be administered online. Both contracted and uncontracted braille forms are available as well. American Sign Language interpreters are allowed as needed. For read aloud or human reader, please note that this accommodation does not include reading passages. We will discuss reading passages more in a moment. Scribe is an accommodation in which scribed answers are entered directly into the testing platform. For the math assessment, a calculator may be provided throughout the entire assessment for those students who have calculator use as part of their IEP or 504 plan. This is in addition to the calculator provided within the assessment platform for some questions. For the reading assessment in grade six plus, read aloud or human reader for reading passages is an accommodation second year of high school who have a documented print disability. For support in determining if this accommodation is appropriate for a student, please reach out to the main DOE Office of Special Services and Inclusive Education. Continued use of math growth, both in spring 2023 and in future academic years, is a decision based on local policy, and so I will only touch upon it briefly here. 
In the spring 2023, map growth will be provided by the Department of Education to SAUs and schools at no additional cost. If schools do choose to give the map growth assessment this spring, please be aware that students are also expected to take the main through year assessment. Some considerations when making this decision include the following. The map growth assessment has no assessment window limitations, whereas the main through year assessment must be started and completed within the May 1st through 26th window. In spring 2023 only, RIT scores will be delayed due to comparability studies and standard setting. If delivering both assessments, please consider whether the extended seat time is worth the other benefits. And there is no language usage component to the three-year assessment. So if you are seeking those results this spring, you will need to take the map growth language usage assessment. In future academic years, Maine DOE will not prevent SAUs and schools from purchasing the map growth product. This is entirely a local decision. Purchasing map growth for the off grades or grades not provided by the main through year assessment, namely grades K through two, nine, 11, and 12, would allow for the maintenance of longitudinal data from early elementary through high school. In only a small number of unique cases, do we anticipate schools purchasing map growth for 2023, 24, and beyond for grades that are required to participate in the three-year assessment due to the need for double testing. <laughs> 